you thought planning a straight wedding was hard, let me tell you, gay weddings aren't a piece of cake. As most of you have heard, the Supreme Court recently ruled that a baker has the right to refuse service to catering a gay marriage in the case of Masterpiece Cake Shop vs. Colorado Civil Rights Commission, in which a gay couple approached maybe the only vehemently homophobic Colorado family-owned bakery and asked them to cater their wedding. He said no, but the key thing is, he didn't say no as the owner of a catering company, but as an artist. And artists have the right to refuse commissions, or else I'd have some really weird episodes. Thank you for the compliment, but no, I'm not going to make an episode comparing race and IQ. So anyways, the question was, is this man an artist, and do public accommodation laws force him to make a cake for anyone who comes in? Armed with a 59 page decision, let's see what happened. So first, because the Supreme Court is basically like a constitutional book club, did everyone turn in their opinion on what the First Amendment means? It turns out that, in this case, the court's opinion on this yes or no question wasn't yes or no. Well congratulations Supreme Court, you got the true false question on the test and filled in all five scantron bubbles with five different options being written from the seven different justices. First, Kennedy wrote for the majority. Now I know what you guys are thinking, oh you didn't say, an old white guy voted against civil rights for gay people? But Kennedy has generally been down with the gay community, voting down anti-sodomy laws and the Defense of Marriage Act, although he has also been down with groups rights to discriminate against gays. For example, when he voted that Boy Scouts can continue to ban gays. Because a bunch of boys, no girls allowed, going out pitching tents and rubbing sticks together to see if there's a spark, wouldn't want anything gay there. So what did Justice Kennedy have to say in this case? Well, he was trying to balance two different rights. First was the authority of a state and its governmental entities to protect the rights and dignity of gay persons who are, or wish to be, married but who face discrimination when they seek goods or services. Which yeah, that sounds pretty relevant to this case. Although the counterweight was the right of all persons to exercise fundamental freedoms under the First Amendment, as applied to the states through the 14th Amendment. Yep, the Free the Slaves 14th Amendment gives everybody equal constitutional protections, including freedom of religion and speech. Now, this might seem weird because the last time I baked a cake, the only thing it represented was a need to open the windows and keep the smoke away from the alarm. Although, there was plenty of prayer going on as my many friends backed away from the stove. In this case though, Kennedy said, The free speech aspect of this case is difficult. For few people who have seen a beautiful wedding cake might have thought of its creation as an exercise of protected speech. Yes. Baking a cake is free speech, which leads me to ask, what are you saying? Run! Alright, this brought up the distinguishing point for Kennedy. You can't refuse to bake a cake for someone. They ask, you have to do it. But you can refuse to customize a cake for someone. To put this into perspective, let's flip it on its head. Because as Kennedy points out, while enforcement proceedings against Phillips were ongoing, the Colorado Civil Rights Division itself endorsed this proposition in cases involving other bakers' creation of cakes, concluding on at least three occasions that a baker acted lawfully in declining to create cakes with decorations that demeaned gay persons or gay marriages. Wow, what is up with Colorado and suing bakers? Three additional times? But don't worry people who want an anti-gay marriage custom cake because Masterpiece Cake Shop has just gotten some of the world's best marketing. Masterpiece Cake Shop Wedding Planning, where your love and hate can join together and blossom. The final piece he wrote about was, The Civil Rights Commission's treatment of his case has some elements of a clear and impressionable hostility towards the sincere religious belief that had motivated his objection. Now, this is definitely a lot more serious than I suspect a lot of liberals think. I mean, at one point, it was said at the start of a public hearing, 
Freedom of religion and religion has been used to justify all kinds of discrimination throughout history, whether it be slavery, whether it be the Holocaust. What? Did he just say religious freedom caused the Holocaust? Because, well, I feel like that's wrong for some reason, and maybe one religion would strongly disagree with that and would have wanted more religious freedom in Nazi Germany. It went on to describe a man's faith as one of the most despicable pieces of rhetoric that people can use. Now remember, this was the government commission charged with enforcing Colorado's discrimination laws that protect against discrimination from sexual orientation and religion. What? Again, this might sound irrelevant to the whole gay cake issue, but a pretty substantially larger amount of most of these opinions was dedicated towards this commission. Because this neutral advocate was about as neutral as Frosty the Snowman at a climate change debate. So now let's just see what Justice Kagan said. Because she came out swinging when she declared that. It is a general rule that religious and philosophical objections do not allow business owners and other actors in the economy and in society to deny protected persons equal access to good and services under a neutral and generally acceptable public accommodations law. Oh man, that would sound great as a quote taken entirely out of context. That said, when you read just a little more. But in upholding that principle, state actors cannot show hostility to religious views. Rather, they must give those views neutral and respectful consideration. Yeah, her entire published opinion barely mentioned cake. And in a case about refusing to make someone a cake, that's a pretty big accomplishment. Her entire argument was just four pages of criticizing this commission for being about as fair and balanced as, well, I'm sure you know where this joke is going. In a small point, she did go out of her way to distinguish herself from Kennedy by saying that the three other lawsuits against people who refused to produce homophobic cakes were different. Because those bakers weren't approaching it from a religious angle, but rather just a moral angle. It's the difference between he told me not to do it and I don't think I should do this. Alright, so who's next? Oh, Neil Gorsuch. Now this judge, probably feeling inadequate about being the greenest Supreme Court justice, wrote a small novel. His opinion was pretty long and mostly focused on the commission's anti-Christian actions. The difference he mentioned in his judgment was that the commission allowed three other bakers to refuse a customer's request that would have required them to violate their secular commitments. Yet, it denied the same accommodation to Mr. Phillips when he refused a customer's request that would have required him to violate his religious beliefs. This may sound similar to what Kagan said, but while she said they were two separate issues, he emphasized that this commission that was supposed to be advocating for both protections of religion and sexual orientation was acting beyond hypocritically by advocating that several bakers who thought it was wrong to bake homophobic cakes shouldn't have to bake those homophobic cakes while simultaneously saying that a baker who thought it was wrong and thought he was going to go to hell if he baked a cake was wrong for refusing to make a custom cake for a gay wedding. Yeah, man, f*** that commission. Someone's getting fired. So next opinion, oh hey! Clarence Thomas. Now Justice Thomas's contribution was that rather than from a religious angle, he approached this argument from a freedom of speech angle. He says that cakes are free speech, which means that I really need to apologize for giving my friend this cake. Oh my gosh, sorry, I thought that anything, as long as it was written on a cake, could not be interpreted as expressing my views and beliefs. When a public accommodations law has the effect of declaring speech itself to be a public accommodation, the First Amendment applies with full force. Basically, the law can obligate people to sell products to anyone, but you can't be forced to create a specialty product for everyone. He also made sure to get a jab in at that commission because, well, that's the hip thing to do in this case. Finally, we come to our dissenting opinion from Justice Ginsburg. She did raise a good point about why the Masterpiece Cake Shop was different from the other three cases when she said first. 
The man wanted a cake made to resemble an open Bible. He requested that one of the cakes include an image of two groomsmen holding hands with a red X over the image saying God hates sin and homosexuality is a despicable sin. On the second cake, Jack requested, God loves sinners and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mmm, what a delicious sounding cake. I want the corn piece, I want the piece that said Christ died for us. Now this was brought up because the baker in question said, yeah, I'll make the Bible cake, I just won't write the worst parts of the Bible in it. In contrast to Jack, Craig and Mullen simply requested a wedding cake. They mentioned no message or anything else distinguishing the cake they wanted to buy from any other wedding cakes Philip would have sold. She extrapolated from that that the three bakers would have refused to make homophobic cakes for anyone. Equality. While Masterpiece Cake Shop would only refuse to make wedding cakes for gay people. She didn't really lay into the commission as much as everyone else, but they did get a reference when she said, The comments by one or two members of one of the four decision making entities considering this case do not justify reversing the judgment below. So there you have it, a war against Christians or a war against gays. Now go scream at each other in the comments. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll convince the other side, just remember to keep caps lock on. And as always, that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, if you want to support independent journalism investigating the Supreme Court, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for my weekly Supreme Court Saturday and, in this case, Monday episodes. As always, leave me a comment if you have an important case you think I should research, and thank you for watching.